Hi, um, I've been nominated to do a In The Bag by Harry Messenger, so thanks very much Harry. Um, so I'm going to crack straight on into it. Um, I've got a couple of bags, um, so I keep one in the car, which I use for quick and promptly rounds. If I'm on the way back from somewhere, I want to pop into a Cotswold View somewhere I go quite often, Knackers every now and again. Um, and I've just got a smaller bag that I'll, I'll grab out of the car, not with my normal line of discs, just with a load of other discs that I throw. Um, this is used a lot also for night golf now. Um, got my little mini marker there, bottle of water that I've always got in there when you're going out. Always useful to have. Uh, so getting onto putters in my putter pouch up the top. This is one of our chariot bags that I use for this. Great little bag for that. Um, first up, you'd have seen this in the John Tweed uh, in the bag, is one of the early run Barons that I absolutely love for putting and um, sort of jump putts, anything up to 20, 25 meters. I'm using that, reaching for it. This is replacement uh, prototype Noble plastic that I've had in there for a, a few weeks now that is very similar in feel and I've been getting on well with that as a replacement once we get through those and that will be all of our new barons are made in those and all the other um, Noble plastics. Uh, then I've got a load of other barons that I use for driving predominantly that just sit in there because um, we've got a lot of barons so I stick them in the bag. Um, then I've got a couple of glow discs, so I've got the Glow Count, Glow Baron, it's slightly more overstable than um, any of their contemporaries. Got an ace at the Belfry, which still isn't widely opened yet, but uh, got an ace there with this disc. It's nice, you can throw it on a big flex and it still fights back at the end. Um, good for the night goal. Uh, moving on to some mid ranges, got a couple in there, uh, actually three in there. So I've got the Fluorescent Duke at 160 grams weight. Love this disc. Throw it really, really hard into a wind. It won't flip. Just goes really, really straight and then dies at the end. Probably my longest throw in mid-range. I've got one of those in this bag, one in that bag. Um, I reach that a lot. Normally, if I've got more airspace, so if there's room out to the right, to throw it up there and have it fade at the end. Um, I use the Duke a lot. Good disc. Especially in that fluorescent plastic. Uh, then I've got an original Duke, so there's very, very few people in the world that have got one of these. Um, this thing goes a bloody mile. It bombs. We're going to try and recreate this. Um, yeah, so this is not a tournament bag that I'm using here. It's just one I play around with. Um, I can use that. Unfortunately, it doesn't go in the tournament bag because it's not PGA approved yet, but oh, it's a great disc. We are going to have to re remake that one. And then I've got the premium plastic prototype of the Duchess, which I've got a couple of these, one in this bag, one in the other bag. I love it, um, use it a hell of a lot in the woods because you can throw it from a quite steep high to get it to flip up, um, depending on how hard you throw it, either to go flat with a bit of fade, or to even turn over and then come back at the end, which means you can pick out all sorts of different lines in the woods. Um, and yeah, I just love the, the pearlescent, um, feel we've got to that, to the plastic, it feels great in the hand and yeah, been a staple disc in my bag for about four or five months now for both bags, throwing it a hell of a lot. I do love throwing my putters in the ranges um, and this is this is in there and hopefully that pearlescent plastic might be our first runs in the future because it's pretty. Uh, moving on to the drivers, I've got a fair few different fairway drivers, so in there I've got Misprint counts, throw for four and backhands, uh, a couple of those. Then this is, well, these two have just gone into the bag, so I've not actually had a chance to throw them yet, but they will be in this bag, which are our new stamped counts um, with a new noble plastic feel, so a tiny bit more flex to it and real grippy quality, like those feel that I was looking forward to getting out of quarantine and throwing them. Uh, then I've got a couple of prototype premium. Um, counts there, which I'm really loving. Um, had Noah out in the field a few months ago throwing this as well, and he was getting some great flights out of it. Really, really straight with a finish at the end. It's got good carry, good glide. Um, and yeah, we're probably going to just stiffen the plastic up a touch because this is brilliant for backhand, but at the moment, forehand, it just feels a bit like it's getting almost lagged behind when you're throwing it. So we're going to go ever so slightly stiffer, but. Yeah, we're almost there with these now. They are feeling good. So I've been out there practicing throwing those. Um, distance drivers don't really carry many in this bag because it's not a bag I use to 
go to big courses much with. Um, I've got a race there that I'm trying to beat in because it's supposed to be a race, but it's more like a five bird. And <laughs> I've been throwing it for a year now and it's still not beaten at all. Um, and then I've got one here that will make a few people jealous is the Bedworth stamp from our very first tournament at Bedworth, Destroyer. Um, so I know Tweed would love to get his hands on one of these. 171 grams. Um, it is one of the good old flying destroyers before you got these overstable meat hooks. It just goes a long, long way. You can throw forehand, backhand, pick lines, really good disc. Um, and so it's a good one having this bag just for. It's, it's a workhorse, it can do all sorts. Um, so I might carry that for quick rounds. And then this one is one I've been carrying for the last three months or so, trying to throw as much as possible. It is a um, prototype distance driver that we have 3D printed out of a very expensive material, um, which actually makes it flexible. So it flies, because most 3D printing is quite flat and hard, it doesn't feel like it flies right. Um, so we did this one up to see what the discs would fly like, and I've been very happy with that so far. Um, so yeah, hopefully that one's coming in the future, but I've been chucking that in this bag for a while just to see how it goes. Um, and that is the chariot bag that I carry, just chuck that in the back of the car most of the time. I also do a lot of course design with that one, so it's my laptop in there, which is great, and it's waterproof. So I can get out and of course wipe my laptop out with the phone and get some GPS stuff out there. and. Yeah, it's good. Then we get onto my tournament bag. This is the Pro Discus 20 Plus. There's actually a bigger one than this, the 30. I have no idea what you need for 30 because I can carry my entire worldly belongings in this thing. It's massive. It's been with me for five years. Um, it's still not showing a sign of wear, and I don't look after things very well. Um, it's a brilliant bag. Absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, it's been my staple for a long, long time. Um, again, Two water bottles there for an 18 hole round, I'll probably go through all of that, um, so I always keep those in there. I've also got my Carabiner Minis, which finally stopped me losing my Minis out on the course. So I've got a couple of those clipped on. I've also got a few of these ones to give away to people if I meet people out on the course when I'm out and about. And generally I forget to take them out on the actual tournament, which is stupid, but that's for me. So, putters. Again, I throw a lot of putters. I love throwing putters. I love throwing mid-ranges. It's just fun. You can uh, it's just watch them fly to them as they go. It's great fun. Um, I've got another one of these. This has been my go-to putt for the last year and a bit, and I absolutely love it. It's the Baron. Unfortunately not stamped, but it just, uh, it just hits the target. It's superb disc. Um, and this is a new Noble Plastic replacement one, which has been going really nice in the back garden since it came in a couple of days ago. Um, looking forward to getting out there and throwing that more. Then I've got the Premium Plastic Jokery, um, which I used to have lots of baseline plastics, but don't have them in there now, so Baron's kind of taken that slot a little bit. But this thing still sticks in there, because one, I use it for night golf and the LED strapped on, um, and it's superb for that. Um, but it's it's just a great disc. You throw it hard and flat, and it'll go hard and flat, and then it'll fade off a tiny bit at the end, forehand or backhand. What I tend to use this a heck of a lot for is getting out of jail. Um, when I get into deep woods and I want some sort of flick out, um, this thing works perfectly. It just seems to fit my hand and fingers well for the sidearm. Um, and I've upset Dark Mavis, Mark Davis, uh, quite a few times out in the course when I've been in what looked like a position to take a four, picked up a birdie with just a lean out up with one of these um, and you can just see his face drop which is always fun um, but yeah I highly recommend the Joker, they're great discs. Um, then the Sparta, uh, this thing, oh, I started using one about three or four years ago, it's probably a couple of years old this one. It is the straightest flying part I have ever thrown, this is in the ultra in plastic. What I love about this is if I lose one I can get the next one is exactly the same as this one and this one is still flying two or three years later exactly the same as a new one will it is i've never come across a disc quite like that absolutely staggering disc dead flat straight probably not the longest flying disc um i'm throwing that holes up to maybe 80 meters at the top end if i've got a bit of height to play with but i'll just throw it up there it's probably flipping up slightly from hyzer and it will just go up 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 down 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 I've picked up a lot of aces of that um, Paste, whole eight of Bedworth, 
old 10 at Quarry Park, the River Ride one down there. has been done with that and then lots of shorter ones as well. It's just so straight flying. I love this disc. Um, and fortunately, if I lose one, I can get another one exactly the same because they are so re reliable and repeatable. Um, Pro Disc is good plastic. Um, and then on to this one, which is probably it. Probably my second oldest disc in the bag, maybe third oldest. Um, this is a Fred Risby Catch the Spirit Wizard, which has been in my bag oh, for probably eight, nine years, something like that. I had a load of wizards. Tom Lowe's bought that for me from America way back when. They all got stolen out of my back garden, which is rather frustrating. And these were my replacements. Um, I have five or six of these in this blue plastic from Chris. Um, and they were my main putting putter for a long time until the Barons took over. The Baron is quite closely modelled on the Wizard. We've got a slightly deeper rim um, and a slightly deeper bead because I like a big bead. Um, but aside from that, they're quite similar ish discs. And this now is my main approach disc. So anything up to about 50 metres, you'll see me stand still with this. And I just I feel it's dialed in. Um, where I practiced a lot with a stack of five of these was up at Washbourne Park. It's a short six hole course, 30 to 55 metre holes, um, basically open. But what it's brilliant for is practicing that approach shot. Um, and so I got very good at throwing nose up stools, basically, where I could attack the chains from that sort of range. I know I wouldn't go too far past it. So you've got that confidence that you're not going to miss. Um, but you also pick up a hell of a lot. And so ace counts around Washbourne are through the roof, but that has then gone over into things like Quarry Park short course and some of the other short courses where I'll throw that a lot and pick up a hell of a lot of aces with it. Um, and when I'm out on the course, if I'm in that range, this is the disc I'm reaching for to just, it just holds that line um, on that nose up. Whereas the Barons, some of them are beaten in now to a point where I can throw them like that. Um, but brand new, they're a bit too overstable for that nose out stall. They will come away. This thing will just hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, drop. Great disc, absolutely great disc. Thank you, Chris, for sorting me out with those in the first place because that has been a staple in my bag for well, a long, long time. Um, right, moving on to mid ranges. Uh, what do we got here? This is the oldest disc I've got in the bag. It was an old Jester Wilson where I used to get loads of my discs from. Was Jester? He'd throw them, not get on with them, and I would pick them up and love them because he'd beaten them in perfectly for me. This is a Stratus, and it is a Scott Papper signature line Stratus, and you're going to need to have been around the game for some time to know who the hell that was. He was a Discraft Pro back in the day, has done a few um, of the early, early YouTube tutorials. Um, and this disc has, oh, I've had it for, must be 13, 14 years now. Lost it up at Burnlaw in about 2008, nine. It came back to me on the Saturday morning of the 2011 tournament, which I then went on to win. Not saying it was down to this coming back, but it had a part. Um, it is so understable, I can throw it like that, it will flip up and come over and still finish right. It's got no left finish at all at the end. Um, what I tend to use it most for now is in the trees, in the woods, on my knees, and I want to throw something hard through a small gap on a high there that's going to flip up and cruise forward. That thing is perfect. I will not throw it off the tee now, pretty much. Um, but it's picked up a fair few aces over the years. And yeah, all round great disc. Uh, Stratus is an underrated disc. They are very good. They've got to be my first ace actually at Stratus. Um, Duke, fluorescent plastic, says Akers Adventures. It's one of ours. It was, we, we ran more. Honestly, I haven't stolen it. Um, really good disc. I've already discussed it. Love that disc. Premium plastic proto of the Duchess. One of my most thrown ones now, especially in the wooded courses. Already talked about that. Um, this thing, absolutely love this thing, it is the Noble Plastic Duchess 17 something or other, 3 or 5 written on there. Um, my white course record at Cotswold View, the 49, which I believe is still the course record, um, might have been beaten by someone recently. This was thrown off 13 or 14 of the tees um, and pretty much got a birdie on every single one of them almost. It was... But yeah, it, it just flies so nice out of the hand. It will flip up from a slight hyzer. If I don't throw it too hard, it will just cruise and end straight. If I throw it really hard, it will flip up. It will turn over to the right a bit and come back at the end. Um, and it just means I can... It's just reliable. It's great. I love a disc where you can throw it on a hyzer through short 
through gaps that are quite early on, so especially in the woods. Um, so you can throw it there and know it's going to flip up afterwards. And this is just perfect for that. So it just gives me confidence on the tee and the wooded courses to throw hard on a high zone. know it's going to flip up and it's not going to end up left. It's just going to flip, go down the channel or something, weave it around trees. I throw it a hell of a lot up backers as well. Um, I throw it on the on longer courses as well because you can absolutely mash on it and throw in a slightly higher line when there's space. It will turn over a bit and come back. Yeah, I really like this disc. Um, and then this, which is probably my second longest serving disc, just about maybe third. Uh, it says Cobra. It is actually a rock. It's a mid stamp rock. It's again, it's an old Jester Wilson one. Um, Jester and Bruce got a load of these in from America years and years ago, probably 15 years ago. I got a couple of these from Jester. They are incredible. They are not like normal rocks. A normal rock, you'll see old DX rock throwers, they'll have the season line. Silo has just done his, um, where you have oak stable, stable, unstable. This thing just doesn't beat in. It is still stable as anything. It just goes dead straight, end up a little bit left. Dead straight, end up a little bit left. Um, absolutely love it. Aced, what was the best ace with this one? Hole 18 at Quarry Park before it became a mound. Um, got it with this one. Um, and it is from the reds, not the blues, I must admit. But, oh boy, it just is a great disc. Absolutely great disc. Um, I would be gutted if I lost that because it's irreplaceable. Probably should look after it a bit more on the train on the floor like I just did. Right, onto my fairways. Uh, Starlight T-Bird. That has done some work. Why am I throwing Starlight T-Bird? Um, Chris O'Brien, again, put me onto these 12 years ago. At the time, back then, people were just coming, you know, premium plastics hadn't been around very long. People were still in this mindset of DX plastics, throw the heavier ranges, throw the heavier weights because it's going to be more wind resistant, less likely to get the um, instability in there that you see in battered DX. Uh, and he said, no, just throw a 150T, but they're just as stable, they're great. And so I did, and he was right. They are great, great discs. Starlight T. Uh, uh, it's about 156. I don't know why I got Starlight at the time. Maybe there weren't any champs available. Um, I had some champs and lost a couple. This thing has stuck in my bag for so long. It is brilliant. It's just dead straight in and into a headwind. Maybe a tiny touch of turn and then it comes down. 90 meter shots, I'm reaching for that. It's just so reliable. Um, it's a great disc. Absolutely great disc. Love it. Throw it sidearm as well. This was uh, Adam Breeden this before he quit sport the first time. He's come back again now, which is nice. Flat top DX Firebird. It's about 15 years old. I've only had it for about eight or nine. I love it. It's hard to describe why or what it does. It's just one that you can reach for. I know it's going to do what you want it to do. It's that hard finish left that it's got. But it gives me quite a long flight first. It actually gives me a bit of turn now before coming back. It's so reliable, it's such a great disc. Again, I'd be gutted to lose that because the plastics are not made like this anymore. Um, it feels like you could shatter if it hits something cold, but it is just a, a lovely, way, way brief light number. Uh, DX Firebird is great. Um, getting on, this was my first MVP disc. I bought it. So I thought I'd probably just put it in the bag and stop. Um, because of watching Mark Davis throwing hole three at Bedworth right here, 130 meters, he was throwing these on a roller. But when I say a roller, he was throwing it from a hyzer under the tree, because you know there's a low branch there over old Bedworth, hole three at Bedworth. He was throwing it like that, it was flipping up, going to a roller, and uh, I think he was just parking the hole with it, and it was staggering to watch. So I wanted to do that, so I bought one. I can't roll it. Uh, I have to fight it to get over, so it's not like I can throw it. The idea was just throwing it from there to flip it over. I've got to fight it over and I need to get it down on the ground. Um, but once I got past that disappointment, my god, it's a good disc. It's in the woods, long distance, um, flip ups from a hyzer, it'll flip over, cruise to the right, come back again, or just throw in a bit softer, it'll flip up and just go dead straight. It's a great disc, I threw it a hell of a lot. Um, really enjoy that. And I keep meaning to throw more MVP and Axiom because I've enjoyed that so much and a few others I've tested from other people's so I've loved. Just never got around to using them, but yeah, I'm going through more as we go on. Get one, you should have one. Champion Fiber 175 does everything. It won't go more than 75 meters, but you don't want it to. You just throw it as hard as you can, it'll go there and stop. 
side arm same, I'm slightly less distance, maybe 65 metres with that stop. I throw it for, uh, for thumbers, for tomahawks, for rollers, I throw it for all sorts. Um, the main thing I use it for now is in the woods, 25-30 metre shots where I want to go for a small gap on the nanny and then come back. This thing is just so reliable because I know it's always going to fight out of it and come back to the basket and it's shaved shots off my game. Um, there's nothing else really like the thing. It's just a brilliant disc. Everyone should have one. Uh, that's just made the bag. Count talked about those earlier. Looking forward to getting out there and throwing it. Um, that's, again, premium plastic prototype count. Talked about one of those earlier. Trace. Um, yeah, longer rake. So that rake I'm just trying to beat in this to make it like this. It's nothing like this. This is just great. I lost my favourite one up at Mark Eaton Park when I was designing the course. Again, one of those where I threw it and forgotten about it and then picked it up. So hopefully someone's enjoying it out there. Uh, not a dog. Um, it's just a really, really great disc. You can throw it really hard, forehand, backhand. It will flip up a little bit and then just go really straight. Um, yeah, loving the trace. That's the Streamline MVP Axiom. It's, really, it's, it's great. I throw it a lot. Uh, what are we into? Shrike. This is the first disc in a long time that surprised me. It is just easy distance. It just adds 10, 15 metres to your drive without you having to do anything. Um, yeah, it really took me by surprise a couple of years ago. Um, I was expecting it to be you know, something that might be a bit like a boss, a bit like you just will flip up from the highs and cruise and cruise and glide. And yeah, um, probably one of my longest throwing discs on a sort of golf line that I throw. Um, Really, really like the shrike. Not got a Don't know what I've done with that one. Uh, and then we're on to the bosses. Tweed will laugh at me for these ones. I've got a couple of Starlight bosses. Sue me. I love them. They're great. They got everything. This, uh, these are, what's this one? This is the first one I've had. This is a long time ago now. Um, went into the River Avon for a couple of years, came back out, and has been a better disc for it. It seems to have taken on some of the mud of the river and made it way more stable. Um, and it just goes an incredibly long way, but it's really controllable. So I can, again, I throw these more than I probably should in some of the longer wooded courses, or I throw them over the tops of things because they're so light. You can just get them to go up and they will cruise forward and they're just fun. And I know I throw them too much and I shouldn't throw them on some of the holes I throw them on, but I just like throwing them. So I'm going to keep on doing it and keep on annoying Tweed that I'm throwing these when he might be throwing a jokery. Um, because I just, yeah, get Starlight Boss, they're great fun. Um, yeah, that one is 140 something or other. I've thrown it the longest I've thrown any disc, so flat ground measure of about 160 metres, just under, with a tailwind thrown on eyes at there. Really high line that came out and went that way. Um, it's bloody incredible. They will go forever if you get them right and get the angles right. Without even much power, as you know, I didn't throw that far. Um, this is quite a new addition. Uh, Pro Destroyer, it's a lovely disc um, given to me by Ken um, over at Ken Jarvis over in Ireland, uh, former world record holder Ken. It's got two flippy for him. I think that's the ace count he's got with it on there. Uh, for me, it's just perfect. Two flippy for Ken. Yep, fair enough, that puts it pretty good into my hands. Um, love this disc, been really enjoying it. Long straight flies, bit of turn. It's, it doesn't feel like pro plastic. It feels more like decent star. It's really good disc stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't banged it destroyer for a long time, but that's made its way back in. Uh, oh, I'm missing my favourite boss. What have I done with that? I don't know what I've done with that. Uh, so I've probably lost it again. Um, just talk about that quickly. It's the, uh, I've got Pulp Fiction stamped by Jesse Denny. Um, first run champ boss, 2008. I think they came out, 2007. Oh, I love that disc. When it first came out, I could throw it a bloody mile. Um, came second in a long distance comp down in Croydon. Well, an unofficial long distance comp behind Bruce, who beat me with a rate. And ahead of James Luton, even though he won't admit it to this day, but I beat him. Um, with about 135 metres into a headwind with that disc. It was and is a brilliant disc. I aced, I 
I've got a couple of aces with it. The longest ace I've got with it was um, hole 15 at Quarry Park, so that's about 100 metres. Um, thrown under that low canopy and it just flexed out, went back in. It's a lovely disc. I lost it for a couple of years at Bedworth at the back of hole 9. It came back maybe two years ago, one year ago. Um, and yeah, it's a brilliant disc. I don't tend to throw it too much now just because I don't want to lose it again. I was really upset when I lost that one. Um, beautiful die on it, beautiful disc, flies just perfectly. Um, and that takes me on to my last one, which is a bottom stamp boss that uh, Dave Fairweather of Manchester and now California just rocked up to me one day and gave it to me, which was very nice of him. Um, one of these died himself, uh, Samurai Warrior on there. It's bloody overstable, really overstable. I tend not to actually throw it a lot because of that. Um, I, the only place I do throw it is if I want to force it over a sidearm, because it's got long distance on that. If I get one over the top, it will come out and it will flex out a bit. So if I really want to like, arm up and throw a pretty poorly formed sidearm with it, but one that I know will come out at the end, I go to that. I do like this, so it's pretty. Thank you, stay for that. Um, getting on to a couple of other bits that I carry in the bag, everyone should. Towels. Have like 10. Plus plastic Ziploc bags to put the wet ones in. A tip given to me by Paul Stoddart at the original Bedworth tournament, uh, which was hellish weather, freezing rain, and oh, it was disgusting. I was frozen to bone and soaked, and Paul was there under his umbrella, dry and happy. He was drying all his discs before he put them away, he was taking wet towels, sticking them into a Ziploc bag so they didn't make everything else wet, put them away. Do the same when you get a wet tournament, and you'll thank me for that, as I thank Paul Stoddart and have done for years ever since. Uh, head torch, that sometimes goes into the other bag if I'm doing my golf. This is a bit of a problem that I have that when we go and play, I don't get to play very often, so we often end up finishing in the dark, not even just the gloom in light of dusk, but dark. Um, and this can be quite useful in that if the phone battery is dying. Um, these hand warmers, get some for your bag. Cotswold View Tournament last year, disgusting weather. Noah and James had a couple on the V card. They were still seeming to be all right. They could feel their fingers using these. They lent me one halfway through the round and suddenly some life came back and I could play again. Um, had them in there since then. They're brilliant, get some. And then I've got vitamin I and paracetamol there. Just in case. Um, what have I got in these side pockets? Uh, all my bits and pieces to be prepared. Cat, hat, snood, Quarry Park Rangers, go QP. Um, and these that Beth bought me after the, my wife bought me after the Cotswold View Tournament. Brilliant, waterproof gloves with a finger bit that you can use bones with, so you don't have to take them on and off to do that. They are superb, I love them. When I lose one of those, I invariably will, I'm really, really upset. Uh, I've got a couple of spare putters. One is spare putting putter, Baron there, and then the other one is safe by Baron. Love having this in here, get it out to have a throw around for a round. I haven't actually used it in a tournament yet, but at some point I will start using it in a tournament because they fly really straight for a baron and will just hold that straight line all the way. But it's just great for a throw around um, or with the kids because it's soft and it doesn't hurt my kids that much. do not do any damage anyway. Uh, then on the other side I've got these for the Great British Nettle. Um, I like playing in shorts. I've wore trousers for years because of the nettles and the brambles that we find on our courses and I didn't want to be the person that didn't charge in there to try and help look for a disc. Um, it always annoys me when people go, oh, I've got shorts or I can't go in. Well, you should have thought of that, shouldn't you? Um, so I wore shorts now and I take these out of the bag if I need to get in the nettles. I can slip them on quickly, take them off quickly. They're small, they're light, so they're only um, thin walls. But it means I can get into the nettles, get into the brambles without fear of getting hurt. Um, and help look for discs or find my own discs. Um, so they come in really useful ideas. This is my waterproof wind jacket thing that I chuck on if there's a light rain that comes out, or I'll have my coat in there if it's heavy rain. That's really nice and light and holds down nicely. Um, and I appear to have a heavy duty rubber gardening glove in there, which I imagine has been from a course design thing at some point. I didn't know it was in there. Um, and that is basically my in the bag. Think. It's a bit of everything, isn't it? I normally have a stamp in there as well, which I was going to say. I don't know what I've done with that either. Um, where you can see on the back of my discs, I've got all my details on there. So I bought a wooden stamp with some stays on ink, 
instead of trying to write my score around there, I've just stamped that one, and I have it in the bag normally, and I haven't lost it. Um, really good little thing to have. So there we go, there is my in the bag. Um, hope you got something out of it. Alright, um, I think I'm supposed to nominate some people, so I'll have to think about that and stick them underneath the post. Alright, hope you're enjoying your time in lockdown Britain, and we'll be out of it soon. Stay safe.